The following program is sponsored by Friends of Life Outreach International. We stand a chance of losing freedom as we've known. Yes, Beyond anything because the human being doesn't yearn to be free. That freedom is a value, not a yearning. Wow. We yearn to be taken care of. Next, Dennis Prager describes people demanding safe spaces to protect them from hearing any idea they disagree with and why they disagree with Christians. Because you're the last remaining barrier, the people who take their values from the Bible. Today, I, I'm, I'm James Robinson. I just told the audience, and you know, I've been on television 50 years and spoken to millions of people. It's the first time I think I've been so excited that I almost am a little bit nervous. I, I want to say something to you before I introduce the guest that Betty and I want you to understand something very important to us as a couple. You know, we love to help the least of these and the overlooked. I'm not sure you understand how much Betty and I love you. I'm not sure you understand how much we actually love everyone you love. We love your family, your children, grandchildren, for us, great-grandchildren, for you perhaps. We just want the best for you because we have a creator, a wonderful God who really loves boundlessly, endlessly, unconditionally. And Betty and I want his best for you. So we try to bring you the best. You know that. And we encourage you to support the best. I think we've got one of the greatest people God ever put on this planet. And I believe he's here precisely for this moment. And I believe really and truly in many ways for the future and for the sake of freedom. And to show us that we're to stand firmly, unwaveringly, for that which is important to everyone that our Creator loves. God loves our Lord loves, and we love. So I want you to join with this audience welcoming to life today, Dennis Prager. Would you welcome Dennis Prager? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. May I, uh, I, want, I want to say something, because uh, a number of these people have heard me before, so they, this won't surprise them. Uh, if, uh, if I'm, I'm a little uh, hesitant about being self-descriptive, but I, I, I will be because I see myself outside of myself a lot. I'm very real, and I love the real, and I want to say something real. When you said into that camera, looking at your viewers, how much you love them and their families, and that God loves them and their families, so do you know what I was thinking? I was thinking how, and I, I have to use the word sick, the description of Christians such as yourself as haters hmm. is in this country. And I say that as a Jew, so I don't, I don't have, so to speak, an ax to grind. But it is so infuriating to me when I hear uh, Christians described as haters, it is so Having lived uh, among so many of you for, for so many years, worked with you, and uh, count many of you as my friends, it is, it is, you could say, well, we differ with Christians on A, B, C, D, E, F, G, that, I, I get that, but haters? Mm -hmm. You open up your program, and it was as obvious as the day is long how sincere you were. You, you, you're, you're feeding kids in Mozambique. The, the people who hate you, who call you haters, couldn't spell Mozambique. <laughs> let, let alone are, are feeding uh, starving people there like you are. So it just infuriates me uh, when I hear that. And uh, it, it's, it's good for somebody, so to speak, outside of you to, to make this point. And I make it all the time. And uh, I... Uh, 
the, the, it's an upside down world that these these the hatred in this country is so overwhelmingly from from the left, uh, uh, not not liberals. I always distinguish between liberals and leftists, but from the left, their their charges against you. Uh, I mean, I'm, look, they called me a Nazi at Google. I mean, you know, you know, here I am. I'm a, I'm a Jew. <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, you know, uh, I, I wrote two books on Judaism, two books on Torah commentary. Uh, you know, I've, I've fought anti-Semites my whole life, wrote a book on anti-Semitism, taught Jewish history at Brooklyn College, and I'm a Nazi. If I'm a Nazi, you realize if I'm a Nazi, the Nazis are terrific people, you know. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they have cheapened, every word has been cheapened, hater, Nazi, fascist, all of that. But anyway, that's what I was thinking, you know, you're good folks and you radiate goodness and you really do, you do care. You, you, no one's perfect. I, I don't know you well enough to know your sins, but by definition, you're human, you sin. But, but that's beside the point. Same with the president. The question is, what, what good is he doing with the most powerful position on earth? Not has he sinned. If it, uh, it, it's so, I, I love when people say, oh, well, you know, kids, they, they look to the president uh, for, their, for their values. And I go, really? <laughs> <laughs> Somehow I don't remember my father ever saying to me, Dennis, Lyndon Johnson. <laughs> Watch how President Johnson behaves. <laughs> yes, the, you're laughing because it's a laugh. It's a total. <laughs> what kid looks to the president? Did I, John Kennedy, Lyndon Johnson, Bill Clinton? I mean, it, that's we don't we don't elect presidents to, to be the models for children. I, I'm, ideally, they would be, but it, it, I don't live in an ideal world. I live in a real world. Is the man doing good? He's called a, a he's called a, um, a a racist. There, today in today in the Washington Post, was an article that it is the highest rate of employment of women of color in the history of employment statistics. <laughs> Would that all racists do such good things for non-whites? <laughs> okay, got it out of my system. I hope you can think of something to say. I'm really glad you're here. You, you, you made a statement about liberals and leftists. Would, would you see the leftists, which it's really taken over so much of the, of the country, which is, we're going to talk about this movie and this book, uh, no safe places because it's becoming too true, and boy, do you understand. But would you say that this mindset of the leftist feeds what we would call a an anti-biblical worldview, an anti-founder perspective? Would you say that's basically where they seem to be lining up? It, it, it's it's I understand it almost entirely in those terms. Uh, I studied the left since I was in college. I, I learned Russian in order to, to read Pravda. So I, I, I really thought I knew the left. I wrote a book explaining the left uh, and, and America and Islam, uh, uh, still the best hope. Uh, I spent all of my life studying this. But only when writing my Bible commentary, finishing my Bible commentary uh, on, on uh, Genesis, I still have three more volumes, of, of, it, of it, it's called the, the, the Rational Bible. And, and I we're gonna talk about that in other programs. Listen, that's correct. Dennis is gonna just, be here, he's gonna be here all week, okay? Right. And you really don't wanna miss it, I'm not kidding you. You don't, yeah. you don't. <laughs> <laughs> that's that was a joke, that, that, no, no, no. That's no. wisdom. No, that, that, that was arrogance. <laughs> no, 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 no. I know the difference. Okay, anyway, so uh, I realized everything came clear to me. The left is a force of chaos. God is a force of order. And that's the best way to explain the left. From music to art to uh, uh, universities to the sexes, everything, it's just, it's chaos. Uh, they introduced it. I, I know music real well. I conduct orchestras periodically. They introduced it. They got rid of tonality in the early 20th century. The left, the musical left, got rid of tonality. So, in other words, no longer is a, is a piece in D major or E flat minor. There was no key. They got rid of, <laughs> of harmony and they got rid of melody. 
So there's nothing left. There's just notes. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not joking. That is all that is left. It is random notes. And then they did it, of course, in painting. There is a, a man standing on a ladder throwing paint from paint cans, Jackson Pollock. And, and, and his things go for tens of millions of dollars. Dear God. It's chaos. It is chaos. Uh, and I don't know what it is in the human spirit that hates order. I, I, I derive joy uh, from it. Children derive joy because it gives them guidelines and guardrails, but they hate it. There are people who hate order. The most dramatic is there's no male and female. That is the now the most dramatic form of chaos that we have. So uh, when the serpent says, the snake says to Eve, you'll be like God if you eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, what does he mean? You will determine good and evil. God won't. Wow. And that is, what is, that is, that is why you are entirely right. It is ultimate, that's why they hate when we, who do they, who does the left hate the most? Christians. They would hate Jews the most, but they're not numerous enough. You're the threat. You're the last remaining threat to the, the takeover of the Western world, uh, which has already taken over much of, but not the U.S. yet. Uh, you're the last remaining barrier. So they must depict you as haters and bigots, or as I you know, six herbs, sexist, intolerant, xenophobic, homophobic, Islamophobic, racist, bigoted. That's, that's, how, that's how you must be depicted, and because you're the last remaining barrier, the people who take their values from the Bible. You're going to show, which you explain in the book and in the movie, No Safe Spaces, which will be airing very soon as these programs air. That's right. And uh, you want to go. You want to encourage everybody to go. You want to help him get the film in every theater possible. Do it. You're going to ask everybody to go because what he's going to show you is what's actually taking place. And the amount of money that is spent just to protect someone who might go to some university and just speak for an hour just to keep them alive in the place that once defended a civil conversation and discussion and difference and now will not tolerate unless it's their message. And uh, you really are trying to say something. So to our viewer... Why did you, with such zeal and passion, move over into that entertainment realm and what Hollywood can do and work with people to do it to try to tell the story? What, why do you consider it so important right now? Are we really reaching a well, place that we could lose security and safety and, and well, basic freedom? Yes. The, the war against a free speech was not predictable, I have to admit. Nothing has surprised me as much as that. If there was one thing all Americans agreed on throughout American history, I don't mean all 100%, 90% of America, is, hey, I may not agree with you, but I will fight to the death for your right to say what you believe. When I was a kid, Nazis marched in Skokie, Illinois. I'll never forget this. People could look it up. And they picked Skokie because they're sadists. That's where most, uh, the most concentrated population of Holocaust survivors lived. So these people who would watch their, their children and, and, and parents and, and, and friends and relatives uh, uh, burned, uh, then uh, they have to see swastikas again. It's a, it's a certain level of sadism to, to Nazism. But everybody agreed, including the Jewish community, they have a right to do it. This is America, man. A Nazi has a right to march with a swastika in front of Jews who lost their whole families in the Holocaust. And this was the 70s, so this is, this is, this is 30 years after Auschwitz, less than 30 years later. Uh, everybody understood, you, 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 you speak in America, that's, that's the gift, that's why we got the Statue of Liberty from France, and Norway didn't, and I'm not knocking Norway, or Canada didn't. America got it. That's why in Hong Kong, they are demonstrating with the American flag. They could have picked any flag of any country in the world. They picked America because it still represents, they don't know how bad it is in America right now, thanks to the left. So they still think America represents free speech. And to a, to a certain extent, we still do. But it is dying and it is virtually dead on campuses. That's what this is about. No safe spaces.
And by the way, the film is great, and it's not great because I'm in it. It's, it's, it, it I, I'm not being humble. I'm not humble. I'm, I'm not arrogant, and I'm not humble. I'm level-headed. <laughs> okay? I just, I, no, no, I am totally, I'm totally clear about who I am. And, and, but it's not great because I'm in it. I'm, uh, it's great, and, and I'm honored to be in it. But it is great independent of me. They, these guys know how to make films. And uh, yes, I'm in it, obviously. Uh, Adam Carolla and I, so to speak, star in it. But, but it is way beyond us. And you, it will be an eye-opener to Americans. You mentioned how much money. You're specifically referring Ben Shapiro, guy who is a yarmulke, an Orthodox Jewish kid, 35 years old, brilliant kid, uh, guy now, uh, goes to Berkeley, $600,000 to protect him. Keep they shouldn't. Him they shouldn't Keep have been hurt. They should. They didn't need. They didn't. They shouldn't have had to spend a hundred dollars. The so. guy just. The, you should hear his speeches. There was nothing incendiary. No. But he. But hey, he's on the right. Mm -hmm. That is how deep and bad it is. Do you know there's a there's a guy in there, Brett Weinstein, uh, a professor at uh, Evergreen uh, College in in Washington State. One day they announced at Evergreen, if you're white, you have to leave the campus for a day. This guy's a lifelong liberal, lifelong Democrat. He said, excuse me, this is ridiculous. I'm not going to leave the campus because I'm white. What are you out of your minds? And this guy was, you know, helped black causes his whole life and everything. The guy uh, is no longer teaches there because his life was threatened. You will see a movie within a movie when you watch No Safe Spaces about what happened to Brett Weinstein at this, at this college. Wow. The screaming and the cursing of this man by students because, as he's a racist, lifelong liberal, because he wouldn't leave the campus because he's white. Wow. This is, please hear me, all of you here in the audience. The real bottom line here is, Dennis, that freedom really is a gift from our Creator. And when God led the Israelites out of bondage, He led them into a land of opportunity flowing with milk and honey a fertile land, and that blesses everybody. Freedom blesses everyone, just like the rain does. As Christians, we believe Galatians 5, 1, it's for freedom Christ set us free. We believe that, and we believe freedom blesses everybody. You are, and we're going to really talk about this in the next program in, in depth. This, this whole documentary movie is about it. This book is about it. You can go online and get the book, mm -hmm. but you really ought to see the movie. You ought to see what's going on, the way people are treated who just believe like Betty and I believe. It wouldn't be safe. And I've spoken all these liberal university campuses. I'd sit on the platform and talk to them. Amazing. Not that way now. Not that it wouldn't be safe. They wouldn't invite me in the first place. But if I got there, it wouldn't be safe. I went to Colorado State a couple of uh, years ago or a year ago. I, go, I happily go to a lot of colleges. And the, it, it, it's funny and sad. The, the police guarding me looked like they were about to fight the Taliban. <laughs> I, I, ha I, I said, guys, could you take a picture with me? My, 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 my friends will think I went to Afghanistan. <laughs> that is how well armed they were for a speech that I, <laughs> life devoted to, to basic ethical principles. You're like, be nice to your parents. You know, really incendiary things like that. Or America really is a good country. We're, we're going to really carry this on. Okay. And I, I want to tell you something. This is great. The documentary will open your eyes. What you're actually saying, and we're going to go in depth in the next programs, we stand a chance of losing freedom as we've known. Yes. Beyond anything because you can the human being doesn't yearn to be free. Mm -hmm. That freedom is a value, not a yearning. Right. Wow. We yearn to be taken care of. That's why the left is popular. Yeah. And that is They don't give you freedom, they take care of you. But taking care of you comes with a that's price. Pharaoh. Your freedom. Your freedom and that's Pharaoh or Caesar or yes, source of the right. creator and it is curtains. All right. You're going to be hearing Dennis all week, all right? The book, the movie, I've given you Dennis's address. Dennis, we are rescuing girls and boys from sexual trafficking. It's one of the most horrible things in the world. Mm -hmm. Our viewers love to help people. I want you to look in right now at a scene that I believe will touch your heart and move you. Please listen to me. We've had some friends step up who so want to set people free in this area. They are giving a $320,000 matching gift 
to double what you give. I want you to watch and see if you don't want to be a part of this. Watch closely. I can't think of anything worse to happen to a child. And I'm so sorry a human did that to you. It's not your fault. मतलब और कहीं ले मलाई ले रहा है कि होता है एक दो ही महीना तो हमने बाहर ही होता है बॉर्डर बंदा होता है काम करो सुना लेते रहे तो यहाँ बड़ा नितेश तो करता 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 ये फिर सुना ली पार करें से अंजाले मलाई किन्हे को उन्हें डेढ़ वर्षा पाले हो मतलब रूम में डेढ़ वर्षा में फिर नितेश तो लाइन म नहीं तो मारे रफाल दिन चो नहीं तो तो ये काम कर पर जस्ट लोग सब दिन न ते दी भी लो चाहने थे मंचर की दले जाते आरुनो आते सारी जाऊँ तो कहाँ जाऊँ क्या करूँ बने डेरे सोच मानते मो आज ये रे बाटो छाई ना बोली ये रे छाई ना ते निराश को जिंदगी गंदगी में जिंदगी जीर बसे Mona's taken the time to open up her heart and relive horrible, horrible experiences and wounds so that you understand what's going on. Many of you have no idea, and you cannot even imagine that something this horrible could happen to a child, but it happens every day. We can stop that. So if you're watching this today and in your heart you feel like well, that really speaks to me. I'm asking you to go beyond that thought and to take action. We can't get back her childhood, but we can keep others from experiencing this horrible way of living. And I just say thank you, God, for people like you who did set this precious woman free. And now then she is teaching others. She has been a part of rescuing these little girls who are about to be caught, taken captive and trafficked. What we're doing is we're getting the children that the traffickers go after before they get them. We actually have our rescue workers and our mission uh, team go into the areas where these children live, tell the parents what's happening and the promises are vain. And because they see the love in all of our workers, they listen. It's miraculous, Betty, that we've actually been able to get them out. You can't watch that and not be deeply moved. You've been the most amazing people on the planet. I think one of the things, Betty, and I want all of you to realize is we love you deeply and we want the best for you. That's the reason why we're having programs like the one you're hearing and we'll hear this week. We don't want your children, those you love, to lose the opportunities that we've been blessed to have so we can bless others. But you are so amazing. When you see a need that can be legitimately and effectively met, you say, count me in. So right now in the last week, this is our last week of this emphasis, we need to hear from all of you. It takes an average of $128 to reach one of these in need, to rescue them and begin the restoration process. That will be doubled. You make a $128 gift, it's immediately doubled. And I always challenge people to think far more than you normally would. 1,280, Betty will rescue 10. And we've done that joyfully. But it'll be double now to rescue 20. There are some of you can get far more than that. And I want to tell you something. Those of you been blessed to do that, do it so beautifully. Thank you. But we need every one of you to help right now. Because Betty and I have stepped out to try to remind America the importance of freedom and people all over the world and to focus on things that need to be done. Some people have said, we don't want to talk to you anymore. That makes me very sad. Please, don't let someone suffer that we could help because maybe you don't understand the burden, compassion, and love that we have for you because we have it for you too and your family. Right now, would you please go get your bank card, go online or dial that number and make the gift God's put on your heart. Would you do that please right now? We have some gifts to send you to say thank you. Thank you for giving the gift of life. 
Behind the bright lights, there is a darkness where a world of innocence is lost and abuse runs rampant, scarring the souls of children with no one and nowhere to turn for help. With bodies broken and hopes crushed, these young victims are trapped in a never-ending nightmare. Today, you can shine the light of God's love in this dark world to reach, rescue, and restore these young ones to the life God designed for them to live. With a generous $320,000 matching gift, now your gift of $128 to help rescue a child can be doubled to help two children. Your $64 gift will be matched to help rescue one child from the horrors of human trafficking. And a $32 mission rescue gift will be doubled to $64. And with your donation of any amount, we'll send you the Faith, Hope, Love tea towel set. These beautifully woven hand towels are a wonderful reminder to remain steadfast in faith, hope, and love each day. With your gift of $128 or more, you'll receive the life-giving Proverbs Journal. Bound in genuine leather, this journal is filled with wisdom and daily encouragement from Proverbs, featuring lined pages for your personal notes as you reflect on godly instruction to success in life. Finally, please consider a gift of $1,280, which will now help rescue 20 children, and you may request our beautiful bronze sculpture, Safe in the Shepherd's Arms. This is the last week. Please call, write, or make your gift online. Well, we're going to send you many gifts to bless you. You're going to love this uh, journal, the Proverbs, and uh, great opportunities for you to share. I want to remind you that uh, Dennis Prager's documentary movie will be in the theaters. Get everybody you know to go. Very important. I really think in many ways the future of freedom depends on whether or not you understand the truths that are being shared and the lies that are being exposed. So no safe spaces. Would you join Betty and me in saying thanks to Dennis Prager for being here with us? We really appreciate you, buddy. You're a blessing. Thank you. Dennis Prager will be with us next program. Don't miss it. Tell everybody to watch, okay? Thanks for your help. Imagine give your life to your father. The one who help you see. Stay connected with Life Today through your favorite social media sites or visit lifetoday.org where life is always on. Best-selling author and radio talk show host Dennis Prager explains how free speech is under attack in America tomorrow on Life Today. Life Today is made possible by the supporters of Life Outreach International. Your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life. The ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts. Gifts are considered to be without restriction as to use unless explicitly stipulated by the donor. The ministry is a member of the ECFA.